Yo, Thweep. Thweep. Yo, Thweep Sin, what? Yo, come here real quick. Oh my god, yo, it's better be important, yo. I was in the middle of, me I mean, uh, playing the game. What's up, man? Yo, Dweeb, question for you, bro, right? Hear me out, hear me out. Yo, every time you say, yo, hear me out, hear me out, yo, you say something ridiculous, yo. You remind me of my man MM, bro, man. I'm just saying. Nah, for real, it's a real question, yo. All right, all right. If you could be in a superhero world, right? Superhero or supervillain, whatever. What would your power be, bro? Oh, that's easy. I would have the power to f him without you knowing. Yo, Dweeb, what? I mean, you asked me a question. I was just being honest, like... It must be bad, bro. I'm just saying. So you want to have like super strength, flight, super speed, and vulnerability, immortality. You would have the power to have sex with my woman, and I wouldn't know about it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Anyways, Dwee, we're doing a superhero video today. God damn it. All right, y'all. Now, I know Dweeb was tripping right then, yo. Like, come on. How are you going to pick that power? That was kind of crazy. Now, if I bend his hand over, he going to be mad. But anyways, that's not what we're here for today. Today, we're here to talk about season one of The Boys. Oh, my God. The Boys is goddamn insane, bro. I know y'all been watching season three, and y'all probably want me to cover that. But you know I need those likes. Get this to 15,000 of them, Jones. I'll do season two. Hey, you know we're going to put the like going season two, too. You feel me? But before I start breaking down the story of the boys, let me give y'all a little premise of the story of the boys, just in case y'all aren't watching it and you live under a rock. Y'all Patrick, ain't you? You feel me, Bars? I'm just saying. So the boys is basically a superhero story slash super villain. You feel me? But in this world, everything is super realistic. Like, I might have the power of super speed and, and do something terrible. Like, I don't know, run into somebody and turn them into dust. Imagine if Barry Allen ran into a human being, bro. What do you think is happening to their body? That happens in the boys. Or, I don't know, imagine you're Superman and you go to dap somebody up too hard and you smack their forearm off. Basically, real world physics apply in this story, bro, which is super awesome and makes for some of the funniest ever. Imagine you go to finger somebody with super strength, you're gonna tear their clit off. I'm just saying. So, in this story, my man Huey is the protagonist, the hero amongst humans, amongst other heroes. And there's also Butcher, Frenchie, Kimiko, Mother's Milk, Starlight. There's a whole bunch of characters. We're going to talk about them. But today, I am proud to bring you the boys. Now, the story would have started off with my man Huey, but there's this little prequel to the beginning of the story. It's an armed robbery that's been caught on film. Now, this whole scene is hilarious because there's two little boys arguing over who's the best member of the fake Justice League or the seven. Literally, y'all were walking a tight line on this one, yo. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know how y'all didn't get any copyrights, but and that's neither near or there. Now, they're arguing back and forth about this invisible guy, Translucent, and this guy, The Deep, who was a fake Aquaman. I'm not gonna lie to you. Both of these niggas is lame, but I would probably go with Translucent in the fight because The Deep is a bum. We're gonna talk about him. Now, while this is happening, an armed robbery is taking place. And of course, they end up grabbing these kids as hostages. Now, May shows up the fake Wonder Woman and Homelander, who is the antagonist of our story and a terrible, terrible human being with the powers of Superman. But he's way more diverse and intricate than just saying he's evil Superman done right. I hate when people say that because they literally have none of the similar personality traits of each other. Literally, they're just two different characters, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Now, Homelander immediately lasers these guys in their face and i instantly know oh this is for real this is like real life superhero these it's not playing why are you even trying to hold hostages when you see soups in front of you bro you know that you're basically a baby in their hands y'all are silly putty to a toddler right now i swear to god but after this happens and we get the little introduction to what the superhero world is like we meet huey now he works at this tech place they be laying cable <laughs> you feel me i said that because his girlfriend robin made a laying cable joke which really means taking a sh it, it, it was weird but anyways robin shows up and she's talking to him and huey has his problem he's not very confident this is a square he's what dweeb would be if he was in the story yo son i heard that man Fuck you oh dweeb my fault bro my fault <laughs> But basically, Huey's kind of soft, man. He has a problem with insecurities, which get brought up in season two, but notably in season three. And we'll talk about those as I make more videos. But he also has a self-confidence problem. He lacks it. He wants to ask his boss for a raise, but he doesn't because he's a pussy. Basically, cut and dry. Now, him and Robin are about to go have sex. They're a lovely couple. They're outside walking. Robin stops for a second and grabs his hands. They're holding each other in their arms. He's standing on the curb. She's standing in front of the curb. And literally in an instantaneous second, this nigga A-Train, the fake Barry Allen, the fake Wally West, the fake Flash looking ass. First off, 
he's the black flash which is fire but why do they make him lame as hell bro they made this man a drug addict in this show bro somebody get this a mentor bro somebody talk to this nigga. <sighs> they had to make the black flash lame the only black character in the seven well i guess noir counts technically but like not really though bro but it doesn't matter bro a train lane but anyways a train runs straight into robin bro remember when i told you in the beginning what would happen if the flash ran into a human being well this happened with a train her body literally combusted into guts and blood everywhere there's intestines here brain here eyeballs here she's dead like super dead though like literally her body has combusted into nothing but blood and guts they're everywhere huey is covered in the blood of the land no, i'm just kidding but Huey looks like he just got in a wrestling match with a dead cow carcass in a fucking slaughterhouse, bro. There's literally blood everywhere on this guy. Now, after this happens, of course, they blow it over. A-Train tries to act like he is so sorry and apologetic. And they try to get this get Huey to sign an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement for some of y'all that don't know, which would basically make it so he can't talk about this. And all he would get for this is $45,000. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I understand where Huey was going with this. This was probably the love of his life, someone he saw a future with, which is crazy because as soon as he meets this other woman in his life, he literally doesn't mention her name again until uh, season three, bro. I... <laughs> which is crazy, but you know, whatever. He wouldn't take the $45,000, but the way that he moved on from her, you would have thought maybe he would have took the money. I would have took the money, bro, I'ma be honest. You can take the money and still get back at him. I don't understand, but anyways, moving on. So Starlight gets introduced into the story here. She basically is somebody that got brought up by her mom her entire life. She put her through all these stupid hero pageants and stuff. Shorty should have been on little tiaras and on TLC. I ain't gonna lie. Her life was basically a f***ed up TLC show, bro. Like, she would have been in a slot between 600 pounds life and like uh my eight wives you feel me like on some real shit or hoarders <laughs> like i'm not gonna lie bro her life was crazy but she's been training her whole life to be a part of the fake justice league as well and since there was an opening because lamplighter retired <laughs> put that in quotes retired she goes to audition and she gets it she goes to make her introduction to the seven and it's literally a fake conglomerate bro everything here is just this big business they're backstage telling her oh we love you you're up 19 points among these people you're great put your makeup on nah, nah, nah. all this fake bullshit, bro i literally am looking at this shit like this ain't no superhero show bro this is like big industry bro vault is a big industry bro this is like the amazon of superheroes heroes bro like, like literally they can ship any superhero to you for any need you have bro this is insane literally insane but you know, i digress now starlight goes out to the front the deep introduces her there's this whole moment i'm thinking oh the deep is kind of cool and then i found out that this nick is rapey bro this nick literally raped starlight bro so they go into this room oh look it's the justice league room this is where the seven meet ah this is homelander's chair and she says so you know i didn't have a homelander poster but i did have like a deep poster like i hope that like you know that's not you know like bad you know like i hope that that's not a problem and as soon as she turns around bro this is stroking his mouth me bro this man is stroking his lobster tail bro this man is beating his dick if you didn't understand what i meant by the other innuendos i made Observe. in front of her and he's like oh oh relax you said you had a crush on me right i'm like Nigga, what anyways at this point he basically blackmails her she's about to leave and he's like look it's just a matter of how bad you want to be in the seven and of course her whole dream is to be in the seven so she just obliges to eat this man's meetup the crazy thing about this moment is i found out that in the counterpart the comic because this is a comic adaptation or a live action adaptation of a comic i'm sorry that it was homelander a train in the deep in the original or it might have been black noir i think it was the deep though was it the deep I, I can't remember but basically all three of them raped her bro which is literally insane i, I can't even understand what <sighs> how did that even happen bro why did they write that into the comic i don't i don't get it but anyways i'm moving on so Huey's in a gas station, right? He's seeing all these things at A-Train. There's like A-Train on the beer in the cooler. There's like an A-Train sign, A-Train on the magazine. He starts having a panic attack. He passes out in the gas station. After this, man, he had a long talk with his dad because he's like, dad, I don't understand what's going on with me, bro. I, I can't stand this nigga, bro. I have to stop this shit. 
bro i can't take this money his dad is telling him like yo take this bread like normally you know i would have just told you what his dad said but you know i gotta hit y'all with the hood translation his dad was like yo 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 gang 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 hey yo look man it's your fucking dad bro stop playing so listen man i ain't gonna lie to you son i know that was your little shorty and all that your little th 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 bop there and all that your little tatiana look man i ain't gonna lie bro robin was cool bro but yo she really wasn't really for you son i'm gonna be honest yo a lot of niggas that you feel me i'm one of those niggas. i've been cracking her every time you feel me you go to sleep like you been hitting it you go to sleep she come out you feel me i've been hitting it you feel me like she been coming to my room i ain't even go to get her you feel me that's how you know like come on she been sniffing the dick bro she you feel me? she got a dick dog you feel me like i'm just saying son like if i was you man i, I wouldn't think too hard about this bro that's 45 bands bro you know what we about to do with that money when you get it we about to run it up son you know how much money we can get from 45 bands come on bro the key's going for 20 right now I can get like two in the possible, you feel me? Come on, man. I'm just saying, bro. We could have, uh, man, we could at least get like, probably run it up like 100 bands off that 45, and then we out of here after that. So you're not going to sign it? Come on, yo. So you're not, yo, the car in the background, that's crazy, bro. I'm breaking the fourth wall. That's crazy, but you're not going to sign it, son? That's crazy. This bitch ass nigga, bro. You a simp. So after this happens, you feel me, and we realize he's not taking the bread, he's back at the tech shop regular day and then fucking hugh jackman i mean uh, uh wolverine i mean i mean butcher butcher shows up bro i am not gonna lie bro when i first saw butcher i knew that this nigga had an australian accent before he even spoke i said oh this nigga from australia this nigga look like he from the dark continent nigga been fighting chimera ants his whole goddamn life so he walks in because he finds out that huey didn't take the bread and he thinks because he didn't take the bread he has an end to vault so he tries to use my man Huey, but we're going to explain it. So he shows up and talks to Huey, and he's like, yo, Huey, come with me, bro. I'm about to take you somewhere. And he takes him to this smut bar. Basically, it's like this soup bar where they do drugs and have sex with each other. It's really weird, but a lot of C listers and B listers, which is crazy that they call them that, but whatever. A lot of them go in there, and they kind of like do all their guilty pleasures together, which is crazy. It's a big circle jerk of soups, but I mean, it doesn't matter. So they go in here because there's some video footage of A-Train where he's laughing about killing Robin. He's telling somebody like, yeah, I ran into that bitch. That man should have stepped out the way. You feel me? I ain't gonna lie. I felt like I ran through a piece of paper. I was like, God damn. Now back to Starlight. Well, she's in the bathroom cleaning up her mouth because the deep, you know, raped her in the mouth. But, you know, she literally calls it mouth rape later on in the season three, I think, which is crazy. Cause like, that's insane to call it that. But uh, like, like, it was just wild. Now, this is crazy because, like, once she leaves the bathroom, right, Maeve is there, too. Maeve's like, yo, clean up. Yo, don't let them see you like this. Maeve probably been getting mouth raped a lot, too, bro. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But, yo, this nigga translucent in the bathroom naked in the woman's bathroom. Bro, these niggas is horny, bro. And later on, I find out this nigga had a son, bro. Why are you acting like that? You're a father. This nigga is moving different, bro. I swear to God. So after this, this is where Huey and Starlight finally meet. Because my man Huey's sitting on the bench eating yeah, Glizzy, yo. which is crazy, old Glizzy yeah, Gladiator, you nasty. But anyways, and my man Starlight, <laughs> you feel me? Oh, my fault. My shorty Starlight, she's sitting beside him. They start exchanging words like, yo, what's going on? Are you all right? She was on the phone with her mom and shit. Huey done overheard the conversation. They've been eavesdropping. They end up talking, chatting it up a little bit. You feel me? They was f***ing with each other. This is their first encounter, but it won't be their last. So after this, this nigga infiltrates the seven. The whole plan was basically to call up and be like, look, I'm going to take the money, but I need an apology from A-Train. As soon as they'll do this, they'll set it up. They'll go into vault. They'll take a little tracker thing. Well, it's not a tracker thing. It's like a little camera type, John, with the audio, John. Wait, it's not a... Bro, I'm, I'm messing up my gadgets. This ain't James Bond. What am I... It's a thing that records audio, basically, and he put it under the table. That was the whole thing. Now, he has to go to the bathroom first to kind of get it out, but the f up thing about it is this man translucent is a pervert so he's in the bathroom invisible watching this huey do it the entire time and i'm like oh shit. well this can't be good invisible pervert done seen it so after this all happens this man huey gets dropped off at his tech job by butcher and realizes butcher done been using him this whole time it is what it is it happens man you feel me and then he rips up the forty five thousand dollar check in front of butcher which is literally the stupidest thing i've ever seen at least keep the money because your job sucks but you know whatever so he goes in and translucent follows behind him of course he's invisible because his skin is made out of carbon fiber it's like this weird alloy that like becomes translucent. It's really weird when you think about it because it's not really like he's invisible, but you know, anyways, he starts mixing this 
Huey up something serious. But don't worry, because my nigga Wolverine, I mean, my nigga Butcher is here to save the day, and he rams into the building and smacks this nigga with an old hatchback. Nigga had Lois car from Family Guy, bro, and smacked this nigga. Trying to watch TV. I swear to God, sometimes I think your head screwed on backwards. I mean, do you have any idea? <gasps> <laughs> So Butcher and Translucent get the fucking mixing, bro. He bloodies Butcher up, and Butcher is so fire. He uses his blood from his mouth to spit it on Translucent to see where he's at. But this nigga Translucent is a superhuman, so he's just strong. He starts mixing this nigga Butcher up something crazy, but my nigga Huey came in clutch because he realizes carbon is super conductive, and he uses a cable cord to shock this nigga, and then he passes out. And I ain't gonna lie, they thought they killed this nigga, but you know, he was still alive. He's a superhero, so he's not gonna die from getting shocked. I mean, it is what it is. Anyways, they put this nigga in the back of the car. Now, earlier in the story, I forgot to mention this, but we meet Madeline. Madeline is like the, not the CEO of Vault, but she's like the person in charge of like all the soups, like stuff and what they're supposed to do, when they're supposed to do it, how they're supposed to do it. Now, Madeline and Homelander have a really weird ass relationship that we'll talk about soon. But Madeline gets blackmailed by this guy she's talking to. She's trying to sell one of her soups to him for $300 million, but he's like, nah, $200 million. And if you don't sell it to me for that, I might have to tell people about Compound V. Now, at the time, we don't know what Compound V is, but it sounds like something important because Madeline looks like she's seen a goddamn ghost. Now, Homelander overheard this because he has super hearing and he has x-ray vision. He's weird. Why would you eavesdrop in and in? But, you know, whatever. And he don't really like this too much because Madeline is his, you feel me? That's his y'all meaner. So he goes and chases this nigga when he's in the jet with his kid. Now, his kid sees him outside. He's like, Dad, look, it's a bird. It's a plane. His dad's like, nah, nigga, that's Homelander. He's like, why the fuck is home? And mid-sentence, this nigga Homelander eyes glow up and he lasers the entire plane. Blows this nigga's jet up. Oh my God, Joe, I can't even believe like, oh my God, what happened to Virgil? <laughs> like, bro, this nigga blew his jet up. Now, after this, my nigga Butcher takes Huey to me Frenchie because they have to find out how they're going to try and kill Translucent because they can't let this nigga go. There's no way. He's unseen her faces. They decide to put this nigga into an electric cage because it, it'll shock him. And they're trying to find out a way on how they're going to penetrate this nigga's skin. Pause on that. That was crazy. But this nigga Frenchie is basically one of the most fire niggas in the show. He's like the tech guy, bro. Well, Huey's like the tech guy, but he's the tech guy in the terms of weapons and killing people and drugs and getting their hands on anything they need basically frenchy got the plug bro i'm not gonna lie he's plugged in he's the socket and that's why i f with him at first he didn't want to take the job and butcher owes him a bunch of money so he was mad about it but then he was like man shit, this nigga see my face so i guess i have to help you now Anyways, after this, back at Vault, Madeline and Homelander are having a conversation. This is the first time things get a little weird. She touches his face and she's like, you have to let me protect you. And I'm like, mm, it's a little weird. I'm just saying. Now, the reason why she brought him in here is because the deep told her that he found scorch marks on the jet and they looked like two high intensity lasers the size of eyeballs. He was very specific on how he snitched. This nigga the deep is literally 6'9", but he smells like seafood, so I mean, at least there's that. At least you smell like Red Lobster, I guess, but anyways. When he me good, I take his ass to Red Lobster. You already know what I did to that thing. That ain't that right. Homelander wasn't too happy about this nigga snitching, bro, so we went to confront him about it. Of course, the deep denies, denies, and then he just ends up apologizing because he's a big bitch. But Homelander, he's like, look, man, you're going to make this right for me. Now go f Shamu in the blowhole. And I was like, oh, oh. Unfortunately, that was crazy. I know that that must have caused emotional damage. I ain't gonna lie, bro. If I was the deep, I wouldn't have let Homelander talk to me like that. But I mean, it is what it is. What's our friends Huey, Frenchie, and Butcher doing? Oh, yeah, still trying to kill Translucent with a big ass bullet they made. He shot this. His skin is impenetrable, bro. And bullet ricocheted all around the room. He's like, ha ha, you fucking idiots. I'm invincible. Back to the drawing board. Anyways, the Deep and Starlight after this, they got a team up. A team up where two soups get together. They basically go to go stop some people. It gets televised. It's like a whole thing. Uh, I, I don't know, bro. I, or whatever. But anyways, it's crazy. Uh, but she is talking heavy to this bro. I'm not going to lie, bro. She basically, uh, all right, I'm going to give you all the hood translation, yo, because this was too crazy. She said, <clears throat> yo, 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 gang, gang, gang. It's your girl, Starlight. <laughs> For, uh, first off, yo, Deep, stop fucking playing with me, bitch ass nigga. You know what it is. Oh, my fault. My fault. I forgot. <laughs> I'm staying character. Yo, deep. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I know that you think you all that and all that, but I'm gonna tell you something, yo. You need to stop 
playing with me. First off, you got that shrimp dick. And I ain't just saying that because you a seafood ass the bitch. I'm talking about you got that little y'all meaner, bro. You got a microscopic penis. You put it in my mouth and I was like, is it in yet? Man, that's crazy because my mouth is a big hole. But yo, if you ever fucking touch me again with your weird ass gills on your stomach, boy, I'm going to smack the shit out you and blind you. You're going to be Stevie Wonder in that bitch. Making songs on the piano like Ray Charles, you goofy bitch. Yo, she was talking heavy to that nigga. I ain't gonna lie, talk to his soul. Just like Translucent was talking to Huey soul right after this. He had a whole conversation with Huey about how, yo, bro, you not built for this life, bro. Like, just let me out the cage, gang. Come on, bro. Like, what? Just, come on, you know what it is. Like, like, come on, like, what are we talking about? <laughs> yo, this next part was crazy. I ain't gonna go into too many details because it was kind of boring, but... The senator was at his little party, his little get together. He was talking crazy to Madeline. Madeline had this nigga set up, right? At this nigga called Doppelganger, this weird ass nigga. He's gonna be very relevant in season two for a crazy part. But, anyways, let's move on. Had this nigga Doppelganger having sex with the senator, looking like some pretty ass woman. Now he puts a blindfold on this nigga, turns into his fat, weird self, got the senator fucking him in the butt. He's like, yo, it feel different in here. Like, of course, nigga. It probably feel like some nasty ass pudding like but anyways he's taking pictures and shit to blackmail him i just thought that that was really funny and i had to mention it because oh my god why was he doing that but anyways let's move on now they finally found the way to get rid of the translucent bro so what they did was they took really high intensity explosives and they stuck it up a place that isn't impenetrable his insides and how did they get it there his asshole they stuck explosives in his butts and <laughs> Yeah, oh my god at this point though his tracking chip done went off and homelander finds out that he's in this little vicinity he starts flying around looking for him they had to end up setting this explosion off to kind of confuse homelander but at this time this nigga gets out the cage he don't pissed in the cup you feel me turned the cage off shorted it out gets out the cage he about to leave but then this nigga huey balls up man this nigga huey had balls of steel in this moment he hit that motherfucker button so quick boy and blew this nigga translucent up and once again he's got fucking ravioli all over him ah where's the meat like it's chef boy rd looking ass nigga bro they really was on him after this man this man huey was a different nigga bro i ain't gonna lie he even stood up to his dad told him he hate pizza rolls and shit i said okay huey you a real nigga yo this next part is not very relevant to the story but i gotta talk about it bro so madeline got this baby she was breastfeeding it this nigga homelander was looking through the goddamn portrait of himself with x-ray vision and staring at her breastfeeding i swear to god this nigga is horny <sighs> all right let's move on this whole next part of the story is about a train pal paul his girlfriend and compound v we find out that compound v is basically the heroine of superheroes bro this is like Enchanted. but it's not a downer it's like a stimulant but it's very addictive uh, it's very bad for your heart and stuff. It's just terrible for you. It could kill you. But they train and Pow Paul be taking this shit. They be shooting it up. These niggas is drug addicts. It is what it is, bro. I don't, you know, whatever. This nigga A train been taking it because he got this race against this other nigga that's super fast and he's trying to beat him, which is super pointless because the race was over in one second, literally. Like they're fing faster than like sound. So it was like phew, done. This nigga A train did win the race, whatever. That doesn't matter. The important part here is that Pow Paul had a fixer upper kit that had compound v in it now around this time we get the introduction of mother's milk one of my favorite characters in the story big buff ass black dude he's really cool bro you feel me butcher goes to meet him they catch up he hates frenchy by the way and when he saw frenchy for the first time they started throwing blows but that's not important this nigga mother's milk is the goat and they probably call this nigga mother's milk because this nigga drank his milk as a kid bro this nigga is a big burly ass nigga this nigga has strong dense bones like i'm just saying like get strong as shit why do you have so many muscles but hey, anyways let's move on they end up sneaking into pal paul's place and they set up some security cameras and stuff to watch her now she owes her landlord some bread because she's a b-lister she don't make no money you feel me she broke so she tries to fuck her landlord basically to try to like be like yo you feel me let's come up to some sort of agreement she starts riding this nigga face and i ain't gonna lie bro i was like okay yo this seemed kind of cool you feel me like i want shorty ride my face <sighs> And you know, I ain't gonna lie, bro. It wasn't good though, you feel me? Cause she rode this nigga face so hard yo, that his fucking brain exploded. This nigga killed him with thighs. You know what women be like, yo, my thighs will kill you, bro. She meant that, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I am not gonna lie. So they go in and ask her about compound V. They don't blackmail her and she gives them some information. At the end of this episode though, things start to heat up because this man Deep had found the box 
that had Translucent's tracking chip and his body in it. And a message on it saying, we're coming for you. And I was like, oh, okay. Pause. Who are you coming for? Anyways, let's move on. So Frenchie and the others go into this building that they got information from Pow Paul for to find a compound V, but they end up finding another character that's very relevant in our story, Kimiko. Now we don't know her name's Kimiko yet, but I just told y'all, cause y'all probably already seen it and it doesn't matter. Kimiko is a soup. She is, I think, Asian descent, I believe. I, I, I don't know exactly. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know y'all dweeb ass niggas will think she is, but whatever. Kimiko, she doesn't talk. She's very rapid. Habit, yo they walk in here he sees her in a fucking cage room and for some reason frenchy thought it'd be a good idea to open the fucking door even though mother's milk was like frenchy don't do that soon as he opens the door yo she flies out of the room kills all of the people in there even tries to get at them so they lock themselves in the room she was out here punishing these niggas i'm talking about mickey 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 cut weave kick the one that saw her yo and he ain't want to get smoked by her so he shot himself in the head that is fucking insane bro I, they must have been doing some terrible shit to her bro i ain't gonna lie now this next part we're getting off the beaten path a little bit but i gotta talk about it the homelander and mave were pretty much tasked with getting on the airplane and stopping these hijackers they get up there and they do it they kill him but this dumbass nigga, homelander shoots a laser at the guy that's got a gun to the pilot the pilot dies and he breaks the whole front of the plane so now we can't fly the plane what an idiot is this and instead of trying to save anybody this grabs Maeve and was like yo we just gotta get out of here there's little girls crying like please stop homelander he's like get the fuck back he's about to shoot him with lasers that's when i realized yo well not exactly when i realized this is when i truly knew that this nigga homelander was literally insane bro this man he's insane now kimiko is running rapid and they're trying to find her bro they end up finding her at the subway. They're chasing her, they're chasing her, but A-Train's also looking for her because he realizes this stuff about Compound V, he needs her. He ends up grabbing her, starts beating her head at like 58 million miles an hour on the fucking side of the wall. I'm like, God damn. If she wasn't a soup, she was getting smoked, bro. Uh, let's just be honest. But this man Frenchie had the smart idea to call people and be like, hey, look, it's A Train. And I'm like, bro, you know, that was actually a good idea, Frenchie. That was pretty smart. After this, Homelander switches up the whole fucking plane shit. He tells everybody, oh my God, it's a travesty. If we had got there sooner, if we had known about this sooner, if we were in Congress and we were a part of the states, you feel me? Their military force, we would have been able to stop this. I hate Homelander yo it's fucking gaslighting ass nigga. but anyways a train had confronted his girl earlier about the compound v and you know he was like yo who did you tell so he took her to some place in cuba <sighs> he goes here talks to her he already done told homelander about everything and he kills his girlfriend he shoots her up with fucking heroin bro a lot of it makes her have an overdose i'm like oh nah this nigga is tripping moving on from this though we get to the believe expo which is fucking insane it's a whole bunch of christian soups and just a bunch of brainwashed christian people but the key important thing of this is that homelander makes this dumbass speech that madeline doesn't like and that this man huey don't blackmail this nigga ezekiel now ezekiel we seen him at the smut bar earlier in the story he was like making out and touching on all these people he He's weird as shit, bro. But Huey was like, oh man, you had sex with me at the smut bar not too long ago. Your dick was so long and perfect. I was like, pause. So he ends up blackmailing Ezekiel basically, which leads to Starlight's speech, bro. And I'm not gonna lie, bro. I, you know, I gotta hit y'all with the hood translation. She got up on that stage and said, yo, what the f it is, gang, gang, gang. It's your girl Starlight. Um, listen, um, all of y'all is his brainwashed i'm not even gonna lie to y'all like I i'm gonna come all the way clean like i don't know why y'all think that everything is sweet it's not sweet there's nothing sugary about this situation they tell y'all the soups is perfect we are not perfect i ain't no version i be getting my back blown out my nigga huey be in my guts he took me to a hotel and all that y'all gotta stop letting them tell you how to live your life honey your body your choice which is really relevant you know right now because fuck congress bro and fuck the supreme court america right now like how y'all gonna overturn roe versus wade like i not to get political you feel me but come on bro what type dumbass shit? but anyways moving on starlight was talking heavy to them now this man madeline done caught this nigga homelander watching her through the painting at this point yo and she's like i see you watching me why don't you come in i was like hold on like what's what you mean come in like what, what we about to get into for real she walk in there bro and let this go watch her bro fucking do the oh this nigga's weird bro he's weird had this nigga laying on her lap and shit like come on, man. Come on bro 
Anyways, after this, Black New Autumn put up on Frenchie and Kimiko, yo, and he gets to mixing Kimiko, bro, badly. Basically kills her, but he doesn't know that she can regenerate, so he leaves. But then she regenerates. She's fine. Kimiko's fine. But she definitely got punished. Black and Water is like that. I don't know why I keep trying to play on my nigga, bro. But anyways, Starlight's on the news after this whole thing done happened, bro. They're basically making fun of Starlight. They're like, I just want to know what nigga shoved his dick in her mouth. I'm like, God damn. Now, something very important happens after all of this. We find out that these niggas have been pushing off Compound V as the fucking polio vaccine. And all the kids that had this shit got superpowers no soup was born naturally it's all literally been this fake polio vaccine bro i'm like bro what kind of fucked up convoluted ass demonic shit is that y'all were putting this weird ass liquid in these kids y'all didn't even know what it was gonna do this shit is literally insane bro oh my god anyways we meet this mesmer after this this little fat chubby ass nigga now he wants to talk to mesmer basically because mesmer can find out stuff about Kimiko, things like that the mother's milk was like oh this is what i can do for you i can tattoo fuck no on my ass <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it's mother's milk funny as hell. Now, while they're off meeting fucking fat ass Mesmer and all that, Huey goes to an AA meeting with this nigga for soups, bro. He in there talking heavy to these niggas, bro. He's in there, bro. Let me tell y'all what this nigga said. He said, all right, crikey, mate. All y'all bitch ass niggas in here, listen up, right? Y'all niggas need to get your shit together, all right? I, I, I know this Australian accent's fucking crikey. This fucking trash, mate. But, 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 but all y'all are fucking trash. Y'all in here, where your fucking guts at? Where your guts though at? Y'all niggas are fucking crikey. Yo. <laughs> yo, I know my Australian viewers mad as hell right now. Yo, I'm sorry, yo. I had to do it, though. Nah, he was talking heavy to the niggas. I ain't gonna lie. Now, Starlight's mad about this whole deep situation. And literally, Madeline's like, look, man, she done made a big scene about this. We're gonna have to relocate you. You're gonna have to take a sabbatical from the seven. And you're gonna have to apologize, bro. This nigga is down bad, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Now, they meet this fat nigga Mesmer, bro. And basically, for Mesmer's help, Mother's Milk is gonna let him see his kid for a little bit. He goes to see his kid. I'm not gonna talk about it. But this nigga literally walks up to his kid and says, hey, look at your dad. And she's like, hi, Charles. And he's like, oh, this is for you so you can get to know me better. And she's like, I don't have a DVD player. <laughs> yo, I ain't gonna lie, yo, she yo, with this nigga, yeah. Like, why does she do that to this? Yo, if this car come by one more time, bro, I'm gonna turn to Homelander in a minute, bro. I swear to God. Right. So, anyways, they got this nigga deep in the middle of fucking nowhere, bro. Like, where is he at right now, bro? This nigga's in Vermont, bro. Like, he shot on my speed. You feel? Me? <laughs> Now they got this nigga in the middle of fucking nowhere, bro. Now, Homelander done found out a lot of information because this nigga Mesmer done snitched. This nigga turned into Shanks. As soon as he helped these niggas out, he went and told this nigga Homelander everything. He breaking it down, yo. He like, oh yeah, so I found out this nigga Huey Campbell, right? Starlight's boyfriend. He's like, oh yeah, this is the nigga that killed Translucent. And they were like, whoa, whoa, how the f did Huey kill Translucent? He's like, exactly. What if he had help? This man A-Train looked her dead in her eyes and said, you been sleeping with him? You bitch. I said, yo. So Homelander is questioning her very intensely. She gets to stand up because he's like, I didn't do it. He's like, sit the f down, Missy. Puts his goddamn laser beams on her. I was like, oh, shit. If it wasn't for me vouching for her, yo, she would have got fucking smoked in here, bro. Shut the f up. I will fucking laser you with aliens in your eyes and explode your fucking Homelander is not playing with these I don't know why they keep playing with nigga Homelander. So Maeve is now responsible for this nigga Starlight. Huey wants to leave now because he's like, oh, I can't do this. I feel like I'm lying to Starlight. This nigga Butcher calls him a bitch. That's a whole thing that they're going through, bro. These niggas basically need to be together the way that they be acting, bro. But anyways, this leads to Huey going back to his crib and this nigga A-Train runs into him because now he knows what he looks like, where he lives at. He's like, you didn't think I would fucking find you? So he's like, yo, whoa, whoa, I know you want to kill me right now, but I got that V. He shows him some of the V. I'm like, oh, man, this nigga A-Train is a druggie, bro. Literally, bro, this bitch Kimiko sneaks in through the vent. While he's talking to this nigga A-Train, bro, she walks up and hits this nigga's leg hard as shit with a crowbar. His whole leg bone came out. Are you insane? Stop attacking. Immediately. Ah! On the ground like, oh, shit. Now, this next part is kind of crazy. This nigga took multiple L's already, bro. He on a sabbatical. He literally broke a dolphin out. It died by getting flown out of his van when he slammed on brakes, and then a truck ran over it. Now he's in this fucking hotel room. He's fucking this woman. She's like, let me see your gills. She starts fingering his gills. It's hurting him. She literally rapes this nigga. But I don't even feel bad about it because he raped somebody else. Like, I know two wrongs don't make it right, but nigga, fuck you. Now, after this, this man Butcher done ran up on Mesmer. He sees this nigga in this train station. This man Mesmer tried to dip off. Yo, Butcher was not playing with this nigga. He starts mixing them up in the bathroom. Yo, pause. That was crazy. Anyway, he starts fucking them up. Mickey, 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 Mickey. 
he lets this read his mind so we can show him that he's about to kill him and then start slamming his head on the sink until he's dead i'm like oh man all right let's fast forward to see what this nigga homelander's doing homelander goes to see his dad or the guy that was watching him when he was a kid but his dad in quotations called this nigga a subject immediately treats this nigga like he's nothing so he goes to tell homelander the truth about this girl rebecca who was butcher's wife that's been missing now rebecca basically slept with homelander but i think he raped her i'm not really sure how it happened i don't remember we'll talk about it in season two when it's really relevant but this nigga tells him that rebecca got pregnant with his kid but died during birth and so did the child this man homelander has this conversation with him and he's like i'm the world's greatest hero this said you are the world's greatest failure i said oh my god now after this everything is kind of okay for for the moment because butcher then gave the v to the cia and the cia done talked to madeline they're basically telling her yo you're fuck, yo you're gonna pull the bill all of this stuff because we know about compound v all this shit but then it happened bro they done sent a super terrorist to basically blow up this whole government building on fucking tv national television bro to the point where they had to send homelander in bro these is are seven steps ahead because of this nigga gustavo bro i ain't gonna lie yo now i ain't gonna lie i forgot the name is it ed or edward i don't i forgot the nigga's name in this but it's a nigga that played gus from breaking bad if y'all know about that also breaking bad is a fire show you feel me i ain't gonna lie but anyways moving on homelander went smoked the super terrorist it's smoking everybody it literally doesn't matter the fucked up thing is in this next part they're at their safe house but black noir and a bunch of people show up and everybody gets caught except for butcher and huey because they were away at the time now huey mother's milk and frenchie they eventually break out and while this is happening butcher done met up with madeline now this butcher is talking heavy to madeline and has her strapped up with explosives but while we're waiting on Butcher and Madeline, let's see what's happening with Huey. Now, Huey and everybody are in this building. They're escaping, but they're about to get gunned down. And who shows up to save the day? Starlight. Starlight saves them. But f***ing A-Train shows up. Jesus Christ, bro. Give it a break already. You're a junkie. Anyways, Homelander's in the crib. Yo, he shows up to where Madeline and Butcher is. This part is insane, bro. This bitch got a bomb strapped to her chest, like I told you. And Homelander just lasered Madeline in the face. Now, Butcher hits the explosives, and I'm thinking like, oh, this is gonna kill itself. But then we see Butcher in the yard. He starts coughing, he gets up, and I'm like, what is happening? Homelander's there, he said, oh, you can thank me for saving you later. And then we see it, bro, the end of season one. Rebecca's standing there with her son. Homelander's son is still alive, and so is Rebecca. And oh my God, bro, after this, bro, I know y'all wanna see and hear about season two, cause Jesus Christ, I can't believe that shit happened. Where this bitch been at? 